Welcome to Sporting Girls, the BTEC Sport and Sport and Exercise Science webinar series, supporting educators and learners to maximize the value of their BTEC qualifications during and beyond study. In this episode, episode five, we're going to be looking at equality, diversity and inclusion, sharing awareness and actionable areas, opportunities for learning moments within the BTEC and apprenticeships, providing considerations, takeaways and next steps. Although this session is in a Welsh context, the content and detail transcend schools, colleges, training providers and also home nations. Hope you find it useful and a value moving forward. On this episode, we have myself, Gareth Reynolds, the sector manager, and I'd also like to welcome our guest, Jason Weber, who's the Equality, Diversity, Inclusion and Integrity Manager at Football Association for Wales. How are you doing, Jason? Yeah, good. It's good, Gareth. Thank you. Thanks for the uh, introduction. No, it's fantastic to have you here. Um, we've, we've explained the sort of things that we're going to be covering, but it'd be great just before we start, just to kind of Get to know you really so i suppose firstly could you just tell us a little bit about yourself how you got to the position you're in now yes yeah, certainly yeah so um i started working for the football association of wales uh, about 19 months ago now uh, in, a, in a brand new position uh, previously i worked for uh, a charity or an organization called show racism the red card uh, so worked for them for about 12 uh, years something like that campaign manager within Wales um, and kind of come from a more of a coaching background I suppose so uh, the sports science uh, at the University of South Wales uh, myself um, and, and kind of I suppose you know wanted a, a career within sport and, and particularly within football um, and, and started working for Shoei Shoei Card and, and sort of getting into the this sort of equality diversity inclusion uh, side of things and uh, yeah brought me to where I am today really. Perfect. I think that answers a nice question there. I was going to ask you, essentially, if um, you'd come from sport into this sort of role or you'd come from the EDI into this role, but you've covered that there and uh, an alumni myself as well from the University of South Wales, um, when it used to be called uh, the University of Glamorgan, actually. Yeah, so, um, that's right. Likewise. Yeah. <laughs> OK, um, so in terms of the role, in terms of the title, it's interesting. We don't often see the term integrity in there. Could you just let us know a little bit more about that? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I, I suppose the, the principle of, um, you know, a, a game that's equal for everyone, um, you know, applies to, to both of, of the roles um, within our uh, association. So also sort of responsible for integrity, which uh, is relation to sort of gambling, match fixing, betting, uh, but also the anti-doping side uh, of things as well. So, you know, the, the principles are tied very closely together in ensuring that equal platform, that equal opportunity to achieve success and, and take part within the game uh, in Wales. Great. So to me, that sounds both an interesting role, diverse and interesting, but in the same breath, very hugely important. Um, what does what does your day to day look like in your role? Yeah, quite, quite varied. And I suppose that's what, uh, you know, is so exciting about it. And as I said, with it being a, a new role as well, there's still, uh, you know, a lot of heavy development uh, of, of initiatives and programmes that we're, we're working on, many that we'll, we'll share during this uh, uh, session as well um, and you know it, it could be out working with with clubs um, you know international players um, you know more of the developmental side of the role uh, in the office as well um, you know there's a huge emphasis on education with both of our um, EDI uh, and, and integrity programs for development resources delivering education myself as well uh, so yeah a real real varied role um, you know right from the the smallest grassroots uh, clubs, uh, you know, right the way up to our, our national Cymru size as well. So yeah, lots of variety to it, which is which is really exciting and, and, and really good. Most definitely. So it'd be great, great to get into it. I think just for listeners, obviously we've got, this is contextualised uh, through FAW, uh, but I think what's important for me in terms of learners, be them on BTEX, apprenticeships, or, or any sort of learning, be that formal or informal, that actually what's what we're covering here transcends all of that, transcends sport. It's, it's important in our everyday as people. So yeah, really looking forward to just kind of giving a flavour of some of the stuff that you've been doing. 
So I suppose that the first thing, just before we sort of get into your strategy and really sort of understand what that's about, and also I'm going to ask you to pronounce it as well, though I've been practicing, I don't quite trust myself, not as a native Welsh speaker. Um, but I, I think it just comes back to that point I was making about the responsibility is whether it's a coach or an instructor or a teacher or a lecturer, that we have a responsibility to provide these learning moments and really try and support everyone's access across their learning um so what i hope to gain from from this session is really something to shine the light at a couple of things that people can go and explore further yeah definitely so um essentially when, when i started uh, back in june 2020 i uh, started the process of developing a, a brand new equality diversity inclusion strategy for football uh, within wales um so we were kind of really looking for an identity of some of the work then that you know, within the strategy and that we were doing. Um, and that's kind of where the, the sort of term PAUB um, was sort of born from. So PAUB is Welsh for everyone. Um, and, and, you know, the, the core part then of, of our strategy is, uh, you know, a, a game for everyone everywhere in Wales. You know, that's kind of the... Uh, the, the the strap line and our vision of what we're trying to achieve but then kind of underpinning that then is very much um, our, our, our mission of what we're really trying to uh, develop and, and achieve across the game um, in all different areas is, is very much around that environment so that environment where you know everyone can be included uh, be a part of um, that sort of representative of all communities uh, across Wales uh, and an environment where everyone feels that they truly feel that they belong and they can be their true authentic selves and sort of strive to be the, the best version of, of themselves. So while somebody might not, you know, end up being a, a Gareth Bale or a, or a Jess Fishlock, for example, but within their own team, um, you know, they, they, they're the best that they, they can possibly be with that and ensuring that the environment is sort of conducive um, and, and welcoming to, to those individuals. So that's very much of what we're, what we're trying to uh, achieve with this, really. And the strategy itself then is sort of split up into, into four sort of core areas. So the first one, um, which I've already touched on slightly, um, is around education uh, and awareness. So a key part of that, I'm sure a lot of people watching this will be coaches uh, or, or even players themselves. So it's an education programme then uh, to sort of increase the understanding uh, of equality, um, you know, what, what diversity is, how do you be inclusive in your coaching or, or within your club, um, and then a, an education programme that sort of provides workshops, webinars, uh, resources as well to increase people's awareness and understanding of, of a real variety of topics um, in various things. I mean, for example, we've got a session next week on Ramadan awareness, um, so looking at obviously the, the religion of Islam and those who will be fasting during April, and if you're a coach, that's obviously something that is really important that you're aware of if you have players who are Muslim because during those periods um, and, and that month you know they won't be eating from when the sun goes up in the morning to when the sun goes down in the evening so if you've got matches you've got training um, you know being aware of uh, some of the practices and beliefs around that are so important to adapt um, you know their workload their training uh, around some of those things so a lot of this stuff is really practical and, and you know really relevant uh, around that as well as well as stuff like challenging discrimination that unfortunately still exists within the game whether that be racism or homophobia um, or whatever um, you know elements around that and, and everyone unfortunately probably will experience that um, you know whatever role they have within the game or within society as well so you know providing some guidance to recognize it and how to report it uh within football uh, in wales as well um, as well as some of the sort of wider awareness pieces then as well around some of the uh, equality partners and charities and organizations um that we're working with as well uh, with regards to some of these sort of awareness periods like sure it's because i'm the red cards month of action or pride month or rainbow laces campaign all those sort of things uh, as well as very much in that first pillar of the strategy um, the second one then is around uh, quality diversity. So a lot of that is around policies, um, around some of the uh, standards and the quality standards that we sort of have to um, develop and, and sort of strive towards as well, um, as well as sort of establishing our own ones and making sure that you know, the game itself is um, as representative and, and inclusive as it can possibly be and trying to push the boundaries on that moving forward as well. Uh, the third one then is around report and challenge. Um, so very much linked to those sort of instances of discrimination to try and encourage that when instances happen, they are being recorded and reported and investigated and, and obviously dealt with as well. Uh, and bringing in that kind of link to education where now it's mandatory education for every sanction for junior players, 
um, uh, and adults as well, or anyone with a, with a role uh, within the game. And then the very last one, which we'll link into some of the points we'll talk about shortly as well, is around listening and understanding, just kind of acknowledging that you know, listening and working and collaborating with various communities across Wales on the development of our initiatives, um, you know, establishing some of the barriers that might still and do still exist and some of the solutions um, that, that we can sort of collaborate on uh, to improve some of those as well. So rather than us as associations sort of, you know, having all the ideas or, or sort of all the solutions, but working together alongside the community groups uh, to, to achieve that uh, and some of our core goals as well. So, yeah, there's very much kind of an overview, I suppose, of, of the strategy itself and, and some of the sort of key things that we're focusing on at the moment. No, and that's a really nice overview and gives a real sort of sense of each of those pillows, if you like. And I think, you know, that first example that you've given there around Ramadan, we've, we've got the piece around awareness, but there's also that piece around action. So you're giving people sort of actionable pieces to do. So whether we're thinking of athlete centric or person centric, um, it's inclusive. And I think that that's, that's really important and, and critical for, and this is part of this work that can be done around people sort of, okay, I need to know what that is. If that doesn't resonate with me around my own lived experience, but what should I be doing? What should I be asking? How can I support my athletes or my participants or my staff or whatever that may be in that situation? And I believe that obviously the strategy, if people want to find more out, they can go to the micro site and, and go and explore that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, if you type in pawb.cymru, powerb.cymru, uh, the strategy is on the, the, the page on there, obviously, as well as uh, our, our education program and, and resources, as I mentioned as well. Great. And, uh, you know, I've sort of seen this around lots of things. I've seen Robbie Earnshaw talking about it. I've seen young people talking about it. So, you know, this for me, looking from the outside in, this isn't just something that, that's there to fulfill, you know, you've got a strategy. This is very much about doing and applying and being integrated and threaded throughout, which I think is essential for anything to work, obviously. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's kind of what we're, what we're trying to do very much with it, really, is that, um, you know, it's that kind of longer term approach, but, um, you know, trying to approach it from a real authentic point, point of view. Um, so, you know, it not being a tick box sort of thing or or just sort of seeing that we're doing something it's, it's trying to make it as practical as possible because as you mentioned everyone and everyone listening on here you know if they're involved in sport or football will will play a role in trying to you know make the sport or, or football more inclusive uh, and representative of communities across wales and, and and increasing those opportunities uh for for everyone to get involved Great. So what we're going to do now is essentially we're not going to cover all, all the detail on all of these sections. And there, there are going to be some people that are listening as opposed to watching. So we, we describe what we've got on the screen on the, in a moment. But really, as I said before, this is about shining a light, some awareness and, and really giving people sort of, OK, where would I go next? Things that I should be thinking about. And this is obviously not an exhaustive list. So those people listening got lots of different sort of visuals on the screen of different campaigns, I suppose, and awareness pieces and, and actionable pieces that you've been doing with the FAW. You. And I don't know if you could just kind of move around some of them and just explain them to us, Jason, just so we get a sense of them. Yeah, definitely. And maybe pull up some of the examples to the four sort of um, themes of our strategy that uh, I've just introduced, really. So, as we mentioned, one of the things that, um, you know, our core aims are trying to increase the understanding and awareness um, of the football family across every role uh, around, um, you know, various areas of, of equality. And uh, the one thing that we sort of uh, have, have established in the last year and been rolling out um, is the power of education programme. So, you know, whether you're a coach, whether you're a player, uh, a club official, a match official, whatever it might be, um, you know, we've had a range of workshops um, uh, around various topics. So, uh, you know, on, on the screen, uh, we've got some examples of uh, our trans inclusion in football workshop, which football versus homophobia, one of our quality partners delivered for us um, around how you, um, you know, again, whether you're a coach or whether you're a club, how you become inclusive uh, and welcoming them to the transgender community um, within Wales, um, as well as, you know, other topics uh, around football welcomes refugees. So at the moment, we've got a big project that we're running on uh, that's been funded and supported by UEFA, um, whereby we're trying to use football uh, to, to help sort of integrate uh, asylum seekers and refugees into Welsh society um, through the game. So within Wales, there's four dispersal areas, Carlos Fonsi, Wrexham, Newport. Um, but obviously when someone is granted stay, um, then they could be housed anywhere within Wales. So we're training up clubs across Wales to be refugee welcoming clubs. So the idea is, is that you know, if you've been housed in Cardiff and end up moving to 
Newtown, for example, and then there's a club then that you can sort of reach out to, whether that be you wanted to play or volunteer or coach uh, within, but we're also providing uh, level one uh, coaching courses and also the advanced referee courses and to asylum seekers and refugees um, to be part of, of the game uh, as well. So again, that's kind of part of that sort of uh, diversity and inclusion piece that, that we're working on. And we've recently launched uh, a programme to try and get more Black and Asian uh, communities um, into refereeing within the game as well. So uh, providing a, um, a sort of a, a diversity programme for um, for them uh, within Wales. We've had some engagement sessions um, and then already we've got sort of more than 20 uh, individuals sort of signed up uh, as, as part of that as well. So, um, so yeah, that, that's kind of key pieces really around that sort of education uh, side of it. And as I mentioned earlier, if anyone's interested in any of those, are more than welcome to do that um, and the information and uh, to register for those are uh, on, the, on the Power website really. Um, the other things... We've just gone uh, in addition to do some education sessions around what racism is and how you can sort of challenge it and become sort of an anti-racism or embedded anti-racism within your club. Um, is obviously support ensure racism the Red Cards Month of Action. So you know that included uh, all of our clubs across Wales showing their support um, for uh, the message of anti-racism and show racism the Red Card, but also our uh, international men's and women's teams warmed up in t-shirts and sort of showed um, their support uh, as well um, as well as recently done in, in November as part of um, the um, Rainbow Laces uh, Action Weeks um, our teams then uh, wore, uh, we've got the Pride armband, uh, Camry armband uh, Captain's armband that they wore uh, during those matches um, as well as some, some activation that uh, took place around social media uh, as well so yes, kind of some of the, some of the key things that um, we've been doing uh, around some of that awareness piece um, and then, as I mentioned, the other side of it is some of the resources that we're trying to create as well. So we've um, fairly recently worked with the Welsh Government on developing a um, sort of tackling online misogyny uh, piece as well that predominantly was targeted towards primary and secondary schools, but again, you know, can, can more than easily be used for, for clubs um, to talk to the young players in particular um, around some of that uh, as well, um, as well as a range of other uh, resources and, and continue to try and develop that moving forward um, as well. Uh, and then kind of two of the other really important things, I suppose, that um, uh, has launched recently was so part of that kind of, um, you know, the diversity side of it, but also, um, you know, the, the listening piece was setting up a range of networks then uh, across Wales. So we've established, um, you know, an LGBTQ uh, football network, we've established Asians in football network, uh, we've got women in football network, um, a disability football network, and you get the picture where we're going here. So the, the idea was, is rather than sort of just having a one group um, that sort of encompasses everyone that is underrepresented with the games, trying to be very specific um, within that as well, because um, obviously every community has very different barriers, different challenges, um, and working alongside them um, with that. So the LGBTQ network, for example, that we set up, one of the things that um, you know the community wanted to do, in addition to the the, the sort of club play inside of it, was actually establish. Um, an LGBTQ fans group for our national team. Um, so that's kind of where the rainbow wall was uh, sort of born out of um, from that and was launched in March uh, last year. We did it online with the uh, Belgium uh, match, um, working with the Belgium Association as well, um, with some of their LGBTQ fans, um, had a bit of online quiz and discussions around the game and things. Um, that's actually going to culminate now um, in March, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, we've got a Proud Together event, um, whereby as part of that set up the national one, we were working with some of the clubs as well to establish their own club LGBTQ fans group. So um, Swansea have got the Swansea Proud, um, Wrexham have got Drag, Dragons proud, Cardiff City got proud bluebirds, um, Newport County got County are proud. Um, so uh, yeah, bringing together all of those groups basically and and, uh, and just the wider football family into a bit of a conference uh, event, which is on the 3rd of March. So uh, yeah, hopefully um, if anyone's interested in, in coming along to that uh, as well. And then one of the other groups we set up there was Amar Cymru, which is our South Asians fans group um, that uh, again had a similar sort of process to um, the rainbow wall in setting up. So the idea of these is that um, you know some of these community groups have you know historically maybe had negative uh, experiences uh, attending international games, for example, um, or there's a you know a fear, whether that be real or perceived, um, of 
the treatment that um, you know they have or might get at, at the game. So actually, what we've done is is work alongside them, uh, providing block bookings in the stadium. So uh, members of the Rainbow Wall and Amal Cymru sit together. So there's that kind of feeling of safety and numbers, um, and obviously you know conscious of where they're sitting within the stadium. Uh, as well with that so just as sort of two examples um you know there's lots of the things that we're working on internationally we've um i think it's actually on the next slide we brought in um a uh, audio descriptive commentary service uh, as well um so you know we we have uh, blind um and vision impaired fans um who you know have either had to stop going to the games and not able to to go to the games um, so that service then sort of provides a bit more of a descriptive commentary on what's taking place on the pitch. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been a real game changer for some individuals who just haven't been able to, to attend matches um, either ever or, or, or in many years' time uh, as well, uh, as well as looking at launching a, a sensory room uh, at the stadium as well, you know, particularly for sort of uh, autistic um, children uh, and others as well. So, yeah, some of the sort of key things I think that, um, that, that we've been working on over the last sort of 18 months um, and there's lots more, but yeah, a little bit of a flavour, I suppose, of, of some of our initiatives. No, and I appreciate that's not an inclusive list, as you say, you know, this, this work essentially never stops. Um, but it's a real sort of a fantastic sort of overview. And I think sort of two things um, from thinking from a teacher's perspective of, of supporting teaching and learning, some really fantastic resources, whether it's on the micro site, but also thinking of FAW on social, I really enjoyed the, the way in which, you know, essentially world superstars such as Jess Fish, Fishlock covering misogyny and really sort of pushing that back, showing that, doing it in a real sort of mature adult way to help people understand, you know, what, what this is about and the importance of it. So there's a lot of good stuff on social, I think, for teachers, lecturers to, to help us hooks in terms of that, that content and helping learners engage with that as well. Um, and I suppose the second thing for me is that, you know, football or FAW here, more importantly, is, is, is setting the standard and also going much wider than football than sport you know football is the hook and and it's the platform i suppose to enable these conversations this awareness and this action piece to happen yeah definitely and i think you know it's again i've mentioned there were collaboration quite a lot but even kind of collaborating across different sports as well and, and i think that's kind of quite important and you know using some of our our players as those role models and, and our platform to, to kind of challenge what, what is essentially societal issues as well and i think for me for me football could be a hugely powerful tool um in in being able to uh, to do that as well and you know that's certainly a, a core part of our work and you mentioned our social media um and we, we use our platforms very much for that so you know even things like around various awareness periods or religious festivals for example um you know things like like pronouns and, and using it again with that education educative angle to it um as well to, to not only sort of just raise awareness that you know various religious festivals or awareness days are are, are on that day or, or taking place but actually what does that kind of mean um, and what, what is that educative angle to it uh, as well so you know that's, that's quite an important part of what we're trying to do Great. And, and some of these things here, I was thinking about moving on from that that previous slide about things that maybe, you know, there, there's some real actionable pieces in here, but here's some quite uh, tangible examples, whether it's your, your email or your LinkedIn, you've, you've got your pronouns uh, and just having that, that conversation and that discussion um, and showing the importance of that. The audio description, you've got some really large academies and colleges across the country. You know, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of people that would be able to, would really love to access them performance is but, but maybe can't and i know there's a, a really nice piece um I, I think i've seen it on your linkedin around sort of exploring that that day journey of what it looks like around audio description mm -hmm. and then also around some of those bits that we might not necessarily think of but really do make a difference so the, the red and green uh, in in terms of the color deficiencies and and people running a drill as a pe teacher or as a coach and then having uh, athletes learners students run between the red and the green cone and and well you don't know the difference between red and green well essentially they can't see the difference between red and green and, and we need to be aware of that as practitioners and also when we're teaching people to coach to, to have that as part of their awareness so mm. I, you know i really like that piece and i know here it's around kits and being able to watch but i think obviously that branches out across a whole plethora of things yeah definitely and, and it's such an important piece you know and and um you know if anyone watches the rugby uh, the week before last, and you know Wales and Ireland 
played in, in red and green again to anyone watching that you know it's really difficult to, to see and you know there's some apps that you can download that um, you can upload a picture to um, and and you know it'll it'll basically generate um, a simulation of, of what it would would uh, appear to um, with with people who've got color uh, deficiencies and um, you know it's such a simple solution um, but, but it can have a huge impact and when you consider one in 12 men and, and one in 200 women you know have um, you know different uh, variations of uh, color blindness and, and deficiencies it, it, it impacts a huge uh, amount of people and um, you know again for, from a coaching perspective you, you, the obvious one is kits but bibs as well cones yeah. um, you know in the indoor facilities you know the, the lines the colored lines on the floor um, you know it, it, it's it's a huge um, huge impact that it can have and, and such a simple solution to it and, and as well as things like design and you know the the presentations that we use in the background colors the text colors um you know again if it's quite a critical piece uh, of information important then certain colors will, will disappear um to, to certain individuals so again it's around that inclusion and ensuring that everyone has the same experience um and, and are not disadvantaged because of some of these things as well yeah, great. And I, and I think just on that, often we, we think about, you know, in my role, I think about sort of the learning that happens on the BTEC or our apprenticeships. And, and often staff will say, okay, well, where's that piece in the content? And actually what, what we want this to do is sort of transcend the content just because we're not covering anti-racism or we're not covering inclusion doesn't mean that that shouldn't then be in practical sport when we're then covering it. It needs to be all encompassing. And I think these sort of takeaways start to help that awareness. So I appreciate people only know what they know. Um, uh, but we also know there's a lot that we need to learn to ensure people are included. Uh, and that's why I think it's really important to, to share this piece that we're doing today, really. So I, I think that leads me on to some questions um, around where people would would go next. Where, you know, how, how do they learn more? How do they make sure they're in a position to, to be um, uh, provide a quality diversity and inclusion. I know that's such a massive thing and you can't do it in sort of one breath, one session, but how do you go and building that and, uh, you know, and being the change you want to see, I suppose? Yeah, no, I, and I think it's really important. I think it's that kind of call to action, um, you know, and I think it's trying to shift it from talking about it to actually changing uh, your own attitudes, perceptions or or actions uh, that you're doing. So obviously I mentioned our, our Power website and our education programme, but kind of going a little bit wider and outside of that, you know, there's a there's a plethora of information um, on the internet and, and various online courses, which are free as well, um, you know, YouTube, um, there's thousands of, of different videos and TED talks and, and a variety of, of different webinars that have taken place, um, you know, over many years previously. So I think it's just kind of, um, you know, maybe doing that self-assessment and kind of looking at what particular areas of, of equality, diversity, inclusion, um, you know, do I not know as much about, you know, so do I know more about sort of race, religion, anti-racism um, than I do about disability or about colorblindness or whatever it might be and, and just trying to find as many resources then books um you know articles etc that can sort of really um increase uh, your understanding and awareness around that and then just constantly thinking about within your role whether it's a coach or whether it's um you know a, a sports development sort of role um is you know how can you adapt what you're doing um when taking in uh, that some some of that information as well because not everyone will have lived experiences uh, as well you know so i always use myself an example so you know being a white male cisgender non-disabled individual of course there are certain advantages in society that i've benefited from you know it's not to say that i've worked hard to get where i'm at and those sort of things but i think it's just acknowledging that um you know i'm at an advantage not disadvantaged um for for certain things so i went to see a football match for example last night in a stadium um now my experience of getting in the car and driving to that stadium and getting to my seat would be very different um if i was a wheelchair user for example so again it's just thinking about how can you take the information that you've learned and and apply it to your role um or, or your day-to-day -day life and try and include you know make things better for for other people or to support other people uh, as well i think that's sort of really interesting people can essentially move on to find bits that they need to find and can kind of delve down that rabbit hole as, as much as they, they wish to challenge themselves and i really like that example that you've given there i think something i'd like to ask and something that I'm asked, asked a little bit more by learners really is, you know, how do I get involved in EDI as, as a role in sport, maybe as, as a career journey? And I know that's not necessarily carved out, but 
you've got your own experience of how you've done that and that question you answered or detail you provide us at the, at the start that gave some awareness but what, what would you suggest to people that are looking to forge their way and not just in terms of providing betterment around EDNI, but actually you know undertaking roles in the future in sport around EDNI. Yeah, definitely. I think that it's, I think a lot of these principles would probably apply to any role within within sport in particular. And I, and I think it's kind of, you know, whether it be um, EDNI or whether it be coaching or whatever that might be, is to find out who who are the leaders within that field, um, you know, within your area or, or, or in general. And, and I think networking is so important, you know, reaching out, um, whether it be through LinkedIn or social media and um, you know, connecting with people, um, you know, asking if you can meet up with them, asking questions, interviewing them yourself, go and shadow them. Um, I, I think that's something that, you know, is is so important, I think, as well. Um, you know, and, and then sort of, you know, being able to, if you, if you can't get a role straight away in, in, the, uh, in, in the industry or within EDI or whatever it might be, but can you try and volunteer as much as you can or, or get involved with certain initiatives? set up establish your own initiatives um you know go and volunteer at a, at a club uh, and do that for a club um and, and i think straight away then is having that experience of doing some of these things because often it's sort of you know when you go for a job or role you're asking what experience you've had and, and sometimes it's the very uh, the point of getting a role is what you need before you can get that experience so it's always a, a really tough one but i think that there's ways that you can you know go out and volunteer and and have um, you know your CV or portfolio sort of built up by the things that you're doing. Um, and actually, it doesn't matter whether that's a paid position or not. But I think it's you know at least you've had some experience then of developing programs or awareness campaigns, um, or, or, or coaching at a club, whatever it might be. So that when that role does come, then you have some experience that you can share. And, and for example, we've got a new staff member. Uh, an EDI uh, and I executive that's starting on, on Monday to, to support me and um, you know the, the, the individual hasn't come from uh, an EDI role or, or, or a background as such but um, you know was, was heavily involved um, in the establishment of, of the Rainbow Wall for example and, and have been doing that over the last year and, and you know all of the voluntary work that they've done essentially it's gotten to the point where you know we, we've we've actually um, you know given them the the, the new role uh, that we've had at the moment. So again, that just highlights that, um, you know, they wouldn't have had that if if they hadn't had uh, done all that volunteering uh, as well. So, you know, I think it's, it's hugely powerful, I think uh, within that as well as networking and trying to get to know the right people. Um, Cause when opportunities come available, if you're in the right place at the right time and you've got the experience and you've got a great opportunity to, uh, to try and get something as well. Great. Yeah. And I think opportunities, you know, the operative word there, taking those opportunities and, and, and doing what you can to in, enhance them. Um, and I think that's really useful for people to thinking about in, in any career path um, in terms of sort of next steps. So I'd really like to thank you for, for your time today, Jason. It's been it's been really great to kind of explore some of those areas and for you to share that contextualization. I, I, you know, almost a call to action uh, to, to lecturers and learners is, you know, visit that micro site, um, you know, sign up to different things that you feel may be of value to you. But there, there's so much there if, if you wish to sort of start on that journey. Um, and, you know, I think for full disclosure, anyone that knows me, I'm despite my accent, I, I'm a, a proud Welshman uh, and, and former sort of I've competed for Wales, so I have to, uh, have to caveat it in that way because people say, you know, you sound very English. But, um, you know, I'm really proud of, of what the FAW is doing in this space. Um, and I think it's fantastic. And I think there's lots there for, um, you know, our learners, particularly on beat techs and apprenticeships and lecturers to be able to utilise to support that learning journey. So, yeah, I'd just like to say thank you. Yeah, thank, no, thanks for having me on. It's, uh, it's been a real pleasure. So, uh, yeah, and, and, and likewise, anyone can, can reach out uh, to me as well by email at paub, P A W B, um, at uh, fw.co.uk as well. Thank you, Jason.